Well, damn it, if I had known that, I wouldn't have wasted the last 20-something years of my life. God. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Why didn't I help my game a long time ago instead of fooling around with a lot of this crap? There it is again. Same repeatable draw, powerful. It's going to land on top of the other ball. It's three yards away from the other ball. See, that's what I'm talking about. We're going to get into this in today's episode. Guys, real quick, before we get too deep into this video, I've got something big I want to share with you. Check out the links down below in the description. You can save yourself some money, help support the channel. And in case you're not familiar with it, there's a super thanks button down below. If you want to help support the channel further and directly. It's sort of like a tip jar, a way to say, you know, thanks for the tip. Here's a tip. All right, let's get into this. Just in case the first two were some kind of beginner's luck or a fluke. Let's do it one more time. Third time's a charm, right? <laughs> same baby draw, same path. Oh my God, it's going to land on top of the other ball. It's right there. It's almost kissing the other ball. All right, what am I talking about? To put this in perspective and give it a little bit of context, for the longest time, if you've watched any kind of golf instruction on, on YouTube or the television or you've read magazines in the past, this is nothing new, but a lot of people talk about holding lag, hanging on to it, maintaining that angle between your arm and the club shaft. And the more lag you get when they look at these things on video or take pictures of it, the more lag you can get, the more speed you're going to generate, the more distance you're going to get. And that's what everybody's been looking for, right? Hold the lag. Well, instead of hold the lag, how about hold your horses? Because I spent a long time trying to hold that lag and increase that angle. And if you don't know what lag is, just in case, you know, you've been living under a rock, when you come down from the top, you're supposed to increase this angle and have this seriously acute and sharp angle. And if you hold on to that and then you wait until the very last second to unleash it at the golf ball, boom, there's this catapulting snapping effect that's supposed to jettison the golf ball. If you can just hold on to that lag and keep a great amount of it and deliver it at the ball, you're going to hit 350 yard drives overnight, right? If it was that simple, then why is everybody not just booming them out there like scud missiles all day at every course around the world? Now, before I get into the main point of this video, just a little side note, I think this might be a little bit of a test for your eyes. Let's find out. So if I go and I kind of make up the top of my backswing here, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, you know, to where I'm, I've, I've transitioned and I'm starting my way down with the club. Now you see the amount of lag I have at this point, right? Do I have more lag now? Doesn't that look like the angle between the shaft and my left arm is a little bit more acute? And if I move it this way, doesn't it look like I've almost thrown away a lot of that lag? It's a little bit of an optical illusion in the sense that unless you understand how far the club is away from the camera at any given point from this face on angle, it could look like you have a lot of lag when you actually don't, or it could also look like you don't have any lag when you actually do. Now look, I'm no rocket scientist. I'm no physics major. I, I don't understand a lot of the biomechanics and the kinesiology that go into the golf swing. I'll admit that openly. But the entire point of this channel from day one, from the very beginning, was to A, try and give an average golfer's perspective, and B, take a look at a lot of the swing methods and the things that were being taught out there to look at some of the things that are being taught and to test them out and to see which of the arguments held water, which ones had merit and could probably help you out, and then which ones were just crap and that were probably going to cause you more heartache than good. So when it comes to a lot of this stuff, I'm not necessarily looking at it from a perspective of, does this match up with what everybody's teaching? Does this fit with the latest instruction? Does this look like it does on the video with the pros when they break it down on CBS with Peter Costas? I don't know. I can't speak to that, but I can tell you this much. You're probably just like I am. You know when a shot is better than it used to be. All right, one more just because it's so much fun. Let's hit another one. One more. Just line up and make it really simple. That was so fast it didn't even register. What is, what is happening? All right, let's try that one more time. 
So I, I've unofficially, I guess it's time number four, but officially it's really time number five. All right. There it is. Now that's a little bit stronger draw than the ones before. It's not gonna land on top of those balls, but it is definitely right beside of it, the same distance, the same compressive crunch of the golf ball, 180 yards total with a seven iron, 172 carry. So what am I doing different? What's going on here? What is it that I'm trying to say in this video? The point is this, rather than trying to hold the lag, I decided to try the opposite. Just like George Costanza and Seinfeld, I think I've made a reference to him before in these videos, but I thought, you know, what would happen if I just tried the opposite? And once again, good old Professor Monty Scheinblum has it right. He actually talks about a drill called the no turn cast drill. And we all know casting is supposedly when you throw all those angles and everything away from the top. But I thought, you know what, let me try the opposite. Not necessarily do the no turn cast drill, even though I have played around with that a little bit in the past. But what would happen if instead of trying to hold that lag, I actually tried to throw it away on purpose? What would that do to my golf swing? So there's a couple of things when trying this out, okay? You can't just try and throw it away. I found it to be a little bit more in depth than that. But anyway, when you get to the top of your swing, rather than trying to hold that lag and bring it down and turn, 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 which a lot of us, okay, all the pros on TV, we've seen that that's what they do. They just turn through it and it's all rotation and that's great. Some of us can't do that, however. And even Jack Nicklaus himself said that he can't throw it fast enough from the top. And that confuses a lot of people. It's all become hold the lag and maintain angles and all of these things nowadays with modern instruction. However, you can't just try and throw it away the wrong way. You can't, if I bring it from this angle, you can't try and throw the shoulder. That is what causes you to cut across the golf ball. That's what causes you to come in this way with the face open and for the ball to spin and go way right off of the planet. But if you get back here and you just try and bring the club back down this way, without that spinning. You just take it to the top and you just bring it down. This shallows the club out. This gets it coming from the inside path. As long as you don't do anything like really dip over or change your posture, if you stay in posture and you just throw this down, it brings the club in along the ground, super shallow, almost like it's scraping the ground and the speed that you'll feel is unbelievable. But what I'm going to do is set my feet nice and wide, get a good stable base. I'm going to get in my posture. I'm going to try and stay in that posture and not have a lot of excess movement this way or this way or bend over a lot or bend my knees more or stand up straight. I'm just going to try and stay where I am and get the club to move around me. And I'm actually going to try and throw the angle away back here somewhere. And I won't be able to do it, but it's still going to be what I try to do. High, baby draw, powerful, concussive impact. Look at this. Look at this. I got one, two, three, four, five golf balls right there. You could throw a blanket onto to keep nice and toasty until you bring them some more friends out there. The speed that the club is coming into the golf ball at, you can feel the difference in the speed. It's much faster. As long as you stay where you were and you throw it at it, you can't hit the ground behind the golf ball unless you move to get to it. So go ahead and throw with abandon. Throw with speed and be fluid about it. Throw it away. Throw it down there and I guarantee you, you won't hit the ground, you won't chunk it. Guys, give this one a shot. See if you can increase your speed and your consistency and get strong ball flights like that one. I'm gonna go back in the house now because it's insanely hot out here, but I'll catch you in the next video.